The Acolyte is a show which is going to haunt me until my dying day. Never could I even possibly imagine something so bad, so terribly written, acted, edited, put together, that cost a hundred and 80 million dollars would be presented to the world as serious entertainment yet here we are however there is a sequence of events and this is before episode 7 i cannot in any capacity fathom how it made it onto the screen so let's break it down in only the way that the interwebs likes to do these things Hi everyone, it's Az here from Heel vs. Babyface. The Acolyte is a show so bad that even Boogie2988 could make a video about it right now and people would forget that he lied about his cancer diagnosis. Yet there was a passage of time in the film which was just so inconceivably re... not quite there on the timescales for YouTube to allow me to use these words that I had to break it down because it's in my head and I need to exercise my demons. Forgive me, Father, for I am about to get balls deep into sin here. At the end of episode five, loads of Jedi are easily dispatched by Smilo Ren, aka Discount Asian Ezra Miller, and Osha and May are finally reunited as identical twins after 16 years of believing each other was killed. Both the sisters seem to be in terms of story on the same page. May, who's the bad sister, wishes to hand herself into the Jedi to answer for her crimes of murder. Osha, who's the good guy, is happy to see her sister, but understands that she has to arrest her and hand her into the Jedi so she can answer for her crimes. Narratively, they are aligned. However, this happens. You're a criminal, May. You must pay for your crimes. What are you doing? What I came here to do, arrest you. Don't do this. Why, you yourself have said that you want to hand yourself into the Jedi now that you've found out that your sister is alive. You were wrong. Osha being alive changes everything. My loyalty is to Osha, not your master. What I'm going to do is surrender myself to Kalnaka and then turn myself into the Jedi. No, 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 stop, stop. The Jedi will put you in prison. Not after I tell them who I know. Your sister is giving you exactly what you want, and now, for some reason, you don't want it. Not that May actually has anything to tell the Jedi, because we've already established that they know that she knows nothing. I see your master has taken great pains to hide his identity, even from you. But it is cute that you think that giving up the identity of your master would absolve you of multiple murder charges. And I hate to break it to you folks, but it gets much worse. <sighs> May Force pushes Osha back and we heard a large drop and a thud. Oh my goodness me, it looks like Osha has been pushed off a very high cliff. And then we see this. You force pushed off a two and a half foot drop and that's rendered her unconscious? I'm really going to have to use my suspension of disbelief here. I mean, how long could she possibly be in this unconscious state for? And that's where things get really wibbly wobbly. May then nonchalantly walks over to Osha, takes her lightsaber that she took from another dead Jedi, bloody kleptomaniacs, then gives herself a Jedi haircut, switches into Osha's clothing, goes back to Master Squid Game, who's just recovered from being knocked out by a stun gun. Now, this, of course, was the stun gun that didn't affect Smilo Ren. But did knock out for a substantial amount of time Master Squid Game because Script needed him to be unconscious 
so the girls could do their shenanigans. Mei, who is now disguised as Osha, hides Osha's body and returns to Master Squid Game, who very conveniently is now regaining consciousness. He decides to leave all the dead bodies of the Jedi, because if he went looking for the Jedi to give them a decent burial, then he would have come across Osha's body and that would have interfered with plot. So they decided to make him look stupid and heartless. They then saunter back through the woods to together, which we've already established, takes a heck of a long time. I hope, I hope, it's home from work we go. No, 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 you can't stop now. I have to fight a Wookiee after this trek. I'd like to rest for a minute. Get back to the ship and once more saunter through the ship as we see Master Squid Game heading towards the communication device in the cockpit. Are you still with me, folks? Because the nonsense is actually just starting now. Because that whole period of time must have been several hours. Let's just say two to be exceedingly generous. Only now does Smilo Ren return to where he fought the Jedi after being carried away by by space insects. He recovers his helmet and his cloak and climbs up a staggeringly high three steps, the ones that Osha fell down, and then round the corner discovers the still unconscious body of Osha, meaning that she's been incapacitated now after falling down three steps for about two hours at least most likely a lot more. But things are going to get even more stupid. The next episode starts with Osha waking up in somebody else's bed. Let's just be honest, probably not for the first time in her life, the dirty tart. We are then provided with the information that Osha has arrived at the holiday destination of Unknown Planet. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold up, wait a minute. Something ain't right. Writers, you do know what you just did there, don't you? That means that Smilo Ren has to pick up Osha, carry her to his ship, which will take two to three hours, travel to a completely different planet, unknown planet. And although the show seems to think that travel is instantaneous, it's really not. Land, take her from his ship into his home, put her down, put some food on to cook, go outside onto the beach to pick up some seashells, and then wait for Osha to come spy on him as he goes skinny dipping in a local lagoon. The dirty slapper. So let's say all in all about seven or eight hours of falling down two fucking stairs. She's not exactly Hans bloody Gruber, for goodness sake. It was a two and a half foot drop. After all, not only did Osha survive this spaceship crashing into a planet, but she didn't even get a scratch on her and remained unconscious for a shorter period of time. So what on earth was Master Squid Game doing? After all, this means that he was at his ship for about two to three hours before Smilo Ren even took off, which also gives him plenty of time to call in the Jedi, blockade the planet, prevent him from taking off or at the very least see him take off and then track him to his destination well here's the good news folks after osha has done all of her traveling seven or eight hours in total only then does master squid game decide to take off from the planet what so how long did it take? Three hours for Smilo Ren to get back to his craft? Another three, four hours to travel to another planet? Another hour or two of Osha being unconscious? What was he doing for eight fucking hours? Does he have zero sense of direction? Did he get lost in his clearly massive ship? Where's the bridge? I know it's around here somewhere. I can't quite put my finger on it though. Oopsie doopsie, never mind. And before any Disney Star Wars shills decide to give their two cents, oh, they're showing it chronologically out of order. Shut up, you stupid tossers. Because when Master Squid Game does leave the planet, this is exactly what happens.
Master Squid Game leaves and the Jedi arrive. So who's the idiot? Is it Master Squid Game for being AWOL for eight bloody hours? Or is it the arriving Jedi who are the fools that couldn't detect the ship taking off, couldn't detect anything about Smilo Ren, couldn't detect their ass from their fucking elbow? Who is the moron here? And another question. If this was all done before Smilo Ren got back to his craft and took off, then where the hell is Master Sol going? Did he read the script? Did that tell him where to go? Huh? So for this incompetent load of crap to make sense within the show from a chronological perspective, then that means Smilo Ren has to actually be on his planet skinny dipping with Osha. So what was Master Sol doing for eight hours i guess we'll never know thank goodness episode seven can't get even more incomprehensibly stupid huh i've had 16 years think about what i would say to you if i ever got the opportunity so you're going to listen no! mama! Mama! <laughs> she's she's right there with you that's her she she knows she was there. She saw it all. You're right. Ne you're kneeling next 